Well, hey there, book world. I am so excited to see you. Welcome to episode 13 of RTTV. Now, today we have a little bit of a switch up. I know for the last two weeks we've been announcing that we were going to have a guest star on to talk to us about formatting and how to work with a formatter. But the last two weeks she's had a couple of things come up and she has not been able to join us. And so we are going to have to work on that for a later date. But today I have something amazing to make up for it. So today we're going to be talking about something that is going to be so incredibly valuable to you that it's going to change the way that you're working your blog and your newsletter. Now we know that your blog and your newsletter are so important to you as an author because it's what connects you to your fans aside from your social media. This is how you really get that in-depth connection with them through your writing, through your newsletter, and through your blog. And today we're going to talk about how to turn anything into an epic blog article. Now I am so excited for this. You are in the right place if you are an author who needs to write to your fans. You are in the right place if you are an author who has a newsletter. You are in the right place if you have a newsletter but you don't often use it. And you're in the right place if you have a blog but you only post once every month or every couple of months. This is going to change how you're doing things because it's going to allow you to create content out of anything and you can do it more and more frequently. So let's not waste any time, let's jump in and get started. Welcome to RTTV, brought to you by Reading Transforms, with your host, K.M. Robinson of K.M. Robinson Photography and Reading Transforms. If you look to the right of your screen, you will note a chat box. We encourage you to ask questions and comment throughout the show. Our moderators will be watching the feed and collecting questions for our hosts to answer during the end of the broadcast. Use the red question mark tab to differentiate your questions from your comments in the feed. If you are a member of our Facebook community and our weekly newsletter, your notes will be emailed to you shortly. Make sure that you are active this week in our Facebook community for deeper insights into how to apply this into your marketing strategy and for ongoing support. Welcome to the weekly live broadcast that will revolutionize your author branding, book marketing, and social media marketing strategies. So today we're going to be talking about how to take absolutely anything and turn it into a valuable news article for either your newsletter or for your blog. And this is important because you need to be putting out consistent communication with your fans. And you need to be able to frequently do this. And I know that this is really hard. Coming up with blog posts and coming up with things to write in your newsletters, that's really difficult sometimes because as authors, we can kind of feel like our life isn't as epic as we would like it to be, or it's not as exciting, or it's not as valuable to our fans and we don't know what to say. But the truth is, you can take absolutely anything, and I do mean anything, and change it into a valuable blog post or something to go in your newsletter that adds value to your fans and makes them actually want to read what you are writing. Amazing, right? So let's talk about how to do this. And the first thing I wanna do is show you a little bit of an example. So here we go. Over this past week, I had a change in my schedule, and this is what happened. My parents had a timeshare um, at the beach, and the hurricane hit us over on the East Coast, and it kind of messed everything up. And so they were going to go on their vacation, and I was going to stay and work and watch the dogs, and, and that's kind of how we work things. My little sister and her husband were going to join them in their own hotel. So they have a dog. They couldn't stay with my parents, um, so they got a, a dog-friendly hotel. And then my sister called my mom and said, hey, listen, everything got hit really hard. You better call and make sure everything's okay. And when my mother called, it was not okay. Our, our timeshare had been hit very, very hard. And they only had a couple of rooms that were kind of dried out at that point. So instead of just canceling the whole trip because my sister could not get a refund, my parents decided to book a room at her pet-friendly hotel. Now, because it was a pet-friendly hotel, I got to go too. So we all went down to the beach, and we got to take my dogs to the beach for the very first time. Now, my dogs are water dogs. Well, two out of three of my dogs are water dogs. And they loved the beach. They had so much fun, especially my dog, Jada. And so Jada got to experience the beach for the very first time, and she loved it. She had so much fun. And then that very last wave on the first day hit her, and it was higher than either of us expected, and it 
went completely over poor Jada and dunked her under the water. And she came up very, very scared. And she climbed up into my arms. Mind you, this is a 40 pound English Springer Spaniel climbing up into my arms. And I had to carry her out part because she was scared and part because there was another wave coming and it was going to take her down too. So I carried her out and she was very, very nervous. And I let her catch her breath. And then I brought her back into the water so that she wouldn't be scared. Now, I'm telling you this because I actually went back to my hotel room after that and I jumped on Facebook Live and I put this out there to my people. Now, here's the thing. Most people are not going to care that I took my puppy dog to the beach. I mean, yes, some people will find that cute and they will like that story, but it's not really valuable to them. But when I jumped on my Facebook Live broadcast, it turned into something valuable. And I'm not going to say any more about that. I actually want to show you. So here's the clip. This is what I did this week for Facebook Live. Hey guys, I just wanted to pop in and give you a quick lesson that my dog can teach us today about your author marketing. So this is Jada, and that's Lacey over there, and Emmy's in front of me. And we are currently at the beach. So if you can see, we are at the ocean. And this is my dog's first time at the beach. And she learned a valuable lesson yesterday. So my dogs love the water, they love to go swimming, they love playing, and they just got to the ocean, and they were playing out in the waves. And at the very last wave, poor Jada, she ended up drowning in the water. The wave went completely over her and she was so nervous. And so I dragged her back out into the water to make sure she wouldn't be afraid of the waves. And she's okay now, um, but she was a little scared because that big scary wave hit her and took her down into the water and she came back up and jumped on me and she was not a happy camper. And so I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about why it is that you need to keep going. So what would have happened if Jada had been scared and had not gone back in the water? Well, she never would have succeeded, would she? Now, because Jada trusted me, she came back out into the water with me and she tried again and now she's happy, she's loving it, she's hanging out with the water and she is just so thrilled to be here. And you as an author are going to come across times when you get hit by these big waves and you're going to want to just say no and be done and not worry about it again. But as an author, you need to keep going because you are not just doing this for you, you're doing this for your fans. So you need to be very aware of how what you're going through impacts everybody else. You can do this. One wave is not going to destroy you, just like it did not destroy Jada. Jada kept going, and now Jada is having the best time here at the beach. Check that out. She would be missing out on all of that if she let one wave tear her down. You are better than that. You have the ability to do so much more. So I want you today, even if you're going through a wave or if you've recently been through a wave or if you're going through a wave soon, don't give up. Stay the course and have that beautiful ocean to be on, to hang out with, to go out in those waves. Face those waves fearlessly and be amazing. Be like Jada and get yourself back in the ocean and enjoy life. Those waves will not tear you down, author. You are incredible. I will see you next time. Thanks for hanging out. So you see, I took an everyday situation, something that they didn't necessarily need to know. It's something more along the lines of something I would post on my Facebook page for my friends and family to see, but not necessarily something I would post for fans to see. And I turned it into something that was valuable to my authors because I equated my dog's experience with their author experience. And I took the wave that crashed over my dog and equated that to a wave that crashes over an author, and then how my dog overcame that and how they can overcome that too. And I turned that personal story into something valuable for the people listening to my Facebook Live broadcast. Now you can do that too. You can turn it into a blog article, which I did. I posted that yesterday on my blog, so you can go check that out. The link will be in the show notes and in the chat box if you are hanging out with us live. Um, we'll put that out at the end for you. And if you're in the show notes, jump down, or if you're in the rebroadcast, jump down to the show notes, and that link will be there so you can see what I've got going on with that. And I turned it into something valuable for my fans. And here's the truth. You can turn anything into something valuable because you have to find a way to connect it to something that is valuable to them. So let's talk a little bit about what we can do. And then I'm going to give you six steps for actually doing this. So let me give you a couple of examples. 
when I was a teacher um, and I would work with younger children, I would do object lessons a lot. And I got to the point where I could actually tell an, a lesson from any object that a student handed me. So I could have them look around the room, they could hand me something, and I could turn it into something that would teach them a lesson. And there were all kinds of different lessons that I could do. I could relate it to the content we were teaching that day. I could relate it to some kind of character building thing. And I turned those into valuable stories based on something that they see every single day. So let's talk a little bit about how this works for you. Let's pretend that you are on a trip. You're walking out in the woods, and you're with your people, you're hanging out, and you come to this cliff. And at the bottom of the cliff is a lake, and you have to decide if you're going to jump off the cliff into the lake, or if you're just going to kind of check it out and look from there. But somebody snapped a picture of you looking over the edge of the cliff. Now, this is an interesting experience. Maybe it's something that they have not uh, your fans have not experienced, and that would be something nice to share. But if you can relate it to something that means something to them, it's going to be so much more valuable to them. So how can we connect that cliff and that lake to you and your author brand? Okay, so let's just say you're, you've actually done this and you're going to be writing a blog post about it. I would start off by describing what you were going through, how you were feeling, what you were seeing, and get really detailed with it. So I was walking through the woods with whoever, and we were on this really nice hike and we were going to a lake. And it was a beautiful lake, it was a nice summer day, everything was warm, we were in our shorts, uh, we had our bathing suits on under our clothing and we were ready to go because we knew we were going to go swimming in this lake. When someone pulled me up on the cliff and showed me over the edge and they suggested that we jump. And I was not sure about it. And as I was standing there, I was thinking how much this is actually like my author experience because writing that book that's kind of walking up that cliff walking out onto the ledge and then you look over and you just see this drop off and down below is the world of publishing and you have to decide what way you're going to take to get down there are you going to make that jump that scary terrifying long jump and I would get into describing how it felt when you actually decided to jump. When you jumped off and the air rushed around you and your hair flew up behind you and you gave that little scream as you were going down and then you plunged into the deep, dark water of the publishing world. And talk about how that experience relates to going through all those scary things as you are jumping into the world of publishing and how you have to go through all these trials. And it's a long drop and it's a very long time and you're uncertain of what's going to happen. You don't exactly know what's at the bottom and you just have to trust that it's all gonna work out the way it's supposed to. And you also wanna be cautious because you need to know what's down there. So do your research before you jump in. You can pull all these things in there and equate this to your author journey. Because chances are some of your fans want to know A, what you've been through and B, what they might go through if they decide to do what you do. If you can offer them that insight and then relate it to something that maybe they have tried or maybe they want to try, like jumping off a cliff, that's going to be very valuable to them. So let me give you another example. Maybe we want something that's a little more mm, every day. Okay, so let's assume it's fall now. It, in real life, it is fallout. And you are driving in your car and you are going to get some coffee. Now I know as authors, most of you love to post those pretty coffee selfies. Coffee. And, and you like to post that on your social media and you like to write about it on your blog and you like to talk about your coffee because you are a coffee fan. So let's talk about fall coffee. What's important? What's uh, unique to fall? What is something that your fans would relate to? Well, I'm just going to pull out pumpkin spice because Heaven knows, pumpkin spice is a big thing in the fall. And if you were talking about your pumpkin spice latte or whatever pumpkin spice thing you have, that's going to connect to your fans. And how would you connect that to something valuable to them? Yes, they like coffee, but do they need to see your coffee cup? No. Do they need to hear about your trip to Starbucks? No. So how do we make it valuable? Well, we've actually talked about this before. Coffee happens to be one of my favorite examples. And if you hung out for any of my Instagram stories trainings, you know that I like to give the example of coffee. So with pumpkin spice, let's just say that you've ordered a pumpkin spice latte and you're going to snap your picture of your pumpkin spice latte and you're going to put it on your blog. And you want to talk about why this is valuable to them. So what's the deal with pumpkin spice? Well, I would go as far as to say it's a bit 
of an obsession of some people. And so I would start by saying, I took a trip to the coffee shop today or the cafe today and I got myself a pumpkin spice latte. And as I was sitting there at my table with my pumpkin spice latte and my biscotti, I was thinking about how much of an obsession I have with pumpkin spice lattes. And that kind of reminds me of my character in the book that I just wrote because this character has an obsession too and their obsession is fill in the blank. And then you talk about how your obsession is pumpkin spice lattes and their obsession is whatever their obsession is and you kind of talk about your characters and how this totally real world thing relates to your totally book world thing. And when you can make those connections, this is an obsession and this is an obsession. It's not the same obsession, but we're talking about obsession. You're bringing your book in front of your fans and giving them something valuable to read because you're telling them more about the characters that they love. Now maybe you have a character who loves coffee and you want to take that mug of coffee and say, hey guys, I just got coffee and it reminds me of the scene where my character went and got coffee and met the guy in the diner and blah 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 and you talk about what happened in your book. Or maybe you have your coffee mug you want to say, guys, I am drinking coffee right now and I just realized I never told you this fun fact about my main guy. Now we don't talk about this in the book, but he actually has a bit of an obsession with coffee and you talk about the type of coffee that he likes. Or maybe you have a book where people have never experienced coffee and you want to talk about what your character would do if they did experience coffee. It's all up to you. You can turn that into any kind of blog post you want and it shows up your coffee, something that your people did not care about before, but now they care about. So let me give you another example. This one's a little snarky. I kind of like this one. And this is a very everyday thing. So this one's going to be about chewing gum. I know, weird, right? That's a weird topic. What if I told you I was going to write a blog post about chewing gum? You would kind of look at me like I was crazy. But it's a bit of an interesting hook. What does this person have to say about gum? Well, I would start off by saying I was just in my car and I drove to the store and I picked up a few things and at the very end I saw some gum sitting by the cash register and I thought, hmm, that's a new flavor, let me try that. I'll just add that to my order and I picked up a pack of gum and I put it in with my order. Now once I paid for it, I went out to my car, I pulled out the gum and I popped a piece in my mouth. I'd actually been wanting to try this flavor and oh my goodness, these are my thoughts on this flavor and you tell them what you had to think. And then you go on to say um, that you were chewing as you were driving and you were driving away and you were thinking and all of a sudden you realize your jaw was kind of tired because you had been chewing for a very long time and you realize, I wonder if this is how someone felt when they talked for a really long time in my book. You remember I had this one character who would not stop talking, this obnoxious character who just kept going and going and going and going. And I wonder if this is how he felt with the tired jaw. Like, I'm chewing my gum, my jaw's really tired. I bet that this character kind of felt like that too. And you have just opened the door to talk about this character based on the fact that you were chewing a piece of gum that you got in the store. So you would take a picture of the gum wrapper with the one piece of missing gum, and then you would write this article about this character who talks a lot and relate it back to your chewing gum. And here's the thing. Whenever your fans see a piece of gum from that point on, they will think about that character in your book because you just took it and related it to gum. Amazing, right? You can turn anything into an epic, value-packed blog post for your fans if you just work at how to word things. So here's the thing. When I was in high school, I did a theater arts class with some friends of mine. It was a lot of fun. And we had this one assignment where we took uh, a scene that was given to us and we only had words. And we had two parts that we were working in partners and we had to read or we had to act out the lines and we had to come up with a scene for it. And there was this one scene that was very clearly someone in distress. It, it very much seemed like someone was in cardiac distress. They were having a heart attack. And that is how every other group that we were with played that scene as if someone were having a heart attack. But my partner and I got up and we turned it into a tennis match. You see, we had the lines. We just had to change how people were thinking about them. We had to change how people were processing them. We had the same lines as everyone else, but while they were over here having a heart attack, 
we were over here having a very intense game of tennis. And we did that time and time again for the different scenes that we went through. And we ended up winning whatever challenge it was we were doing. We did the most unique things for it because we turned how people were perceiving it. And this is what you need to do for this. So here we go. Let's talk a little bit about how this is going to work. I told you that there were six steps to this, and then I'm going to show you some uh, some object lessons. So everything we're talking about today is kind of based on object lessons. Like I told you, I'm a teacher, and when I was teaching, people could hand me things, and we could come up with a lesson for it. So this is a stapler, and I'm gonna talk about that in just a minute. So the six steps, this is what you need to know, six steps. Step one is to identify what everyday or personal story you're going to be talking about. So for this one, you are picking out what you are doing. Step one is identifying what everyday or personal story you're going to be talking about. So pick the story that you want to tell. Maybe it's your coffee, maybe it's a stapler, maybe it's your trip to the cliff. Step two is to decide what your connection will be. So you're picking how that is going to interact with what you're teaching them or what you're talking to them about or what is valuable to them. Step three is to talk about your everyday or personal story in colorful detail as if you were writing it for a story. So don't just tell me the basics, but get very involved in this and tell me as if you are writing a scene for your story and be very descriptive about it. The more interesting you can make it, the more people are going to care. Step four is to relate it to your book or author journey connection for your fans. So what is that connection that you can make? How can you relate that to your book or to your author journey? Step five is to talk about why it reminds you of that thing or how it connects to your fans. So you're telling them what is the connection. You're telling them why it matters to them. You're telling them why it's important. And then step six is to finish it up with a strong push on what the connection is and remind them that every time that they see that object or experience that event in their own life, that it should remind them of your connection. So whenever your fans see that thing that you talked about, you want them to be thinking about your story. So let's go back to my stapler. So let's say um, back when I was in school and I was teaching kids that they handed me a stapler and I had to come up with something that worked for that. Well, I would look at the stapler and it kind of seems like something that's maybe not the greatest lesson. Like, don't stick your finger in it, it'll hurt kids. But you could go further with that. I would look at this stapler and I would talk to them and I would say, you know, this, this is a really interesting stapler. I really like this. And specifically, I like the staples. Now, here's the cool thing about a stapler. What happens is you put two or more pieces of paper in it and then you push down and a staple holds it together. Now here's the thing, the paper, that's unique. Each piece of paper that you are stapling together is a unique, separate, individual thing with individual content that makes it different from the rest of them. But it's held together by a common, by a common connection. That is the staple. And I will then relate the paper to people. So here's the thing, so here's the thing guys. Each of us, each of us, like a piece, like of, paper. A piece of paper. We're unique. We're different. different. We have different, different content. Different things make us up, and different reasons make us important. The staple holds us together. Now, if I were in school, I would relate it to something that is kind of like anti-bullying or um, everything uh, about uh, things that hold us together and keep us together. But in the book world, if I were talking to you, if I were talking to a group of people about books, I would say that we are each unique in the books that we like and the things that we do and the things that we say and how we support the community and what we're doing and what we're writing and what we're saying. But those staples are books. We may be different, we may be unique, we may be completely separate from everything else, but books are our connection and books hold us together. Yeah, we're unique, yeah, we're different, yeah, we each have our own thing going on, but books hold us together in the book world. Nice, right? I turned that stapler into a life lesson about how we work in the book world or how school kids work together to include everyone and not be nice or to be nice, not be a bully. It's as simple as that. So let's talk about something else. I've got some objects here. You can actually throw some objects in the chat box. If you have something you want me to turn into a story, I will happily do that for you to give you some examples. So let's see. Um, oh, this is a good one. Okay. So here's one that's awesome for the book world. I uh, wrote the article for 
this episode earlier and I, I use this as an example. So you're going to be able to see that tomorrow when this goes live um, or down in the show notes if you are watching the rebroadcast, it's already up. So here's a great book world example. Stickers on books. Frustrating, right? We all hate stickers on books. Stickers on books are the worst things ever. So let's talk about this. If I were going to be writing an article specifically on this, on this sticker on my book cover, here's what I would say. We've all experienced having stickers on our book covers and it's frustrating and it's annoying and we're left with two choices. Either leave it there and endure it forever and ever. As you can see, that's kind of what I did here. You can either endure it forever or you could try to take it off. Now when you try to take it off and you peel that back, it doesn't go so well in most cases. In fact, usually it leaves a sticky, disgusting residue and it gets on your hands and it gets on your clothes and it's always on your cover. You can't ever get it off and it leaves marks everywhere and it does not look pretty on your book and it's sticky and it's not good. It leaves that residue. And that's kind of like our author journey. Here's why. The sticker is kind of like when you just jump into something without really researching it. It's kind of like when you sign a book deal without researching the publisher or without talking to a lawyer. And then they end up being not so good. And you try to get rid of them and you talk to a lawyer and you try to get out of your contract. Even when you do get out of your contract and you pull that publisher sticker off or you break that connection with whatever book world professional you're working with, it still leaves that residue and it's sticky and it's not nice and it's not fun and it's not pretty and there are always marks on your author brand and you're always somehow still connected to that sticker you tried to remove from your author brand. And it could have been avoided by not putting it on in the first place. Whatever publisher or book world professional or company that you worked with that ended up not being so good, that residue is always going to be on your author brand, like the sticker on your cover. So before you jump in, make sure you're doing your research, make sure you're talking to your lawyers, make sure you're not signing contracts without having a professional lawyer look them over and make sure you get responses from people who have actually worked with those people before so they, they know that they can be trusted. Pretty good, right? I just took a book sticker and dealt you a life lesson in how to be an author. So let's try some other things. I'm seeing some stuff in the chat room here. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at those in just a minute, but I do have some really cool stuff here. So let's see, how can I relate some of this to... Okay, so here's one for you. This is a greeting card. It's, it's just a greeting card, it's blank inside. I might actually write a little letter and then I would take a pretty photo of it. And I would say, uh, guys, I was writing some thank you letters this week and this really pretty card made me think about the story that I had just written. Um, I know it's your favorite and it reminded me of a scene in the book where a card would have been really helpful. And I would go on to talk about if someone had sent a card with some information on it to my main character, how it would have changed my story and how I really enjoyed that it did not change it. But what would have happened if, and that would have made a really good blog article. Now I also could have said I was getting cards, I was writing thank you cards, and I wrote a thank you card to an author friend of mine and I just wanted to take a minute to give her a shout out and I want to talk about what she did for me this week and why she's been so helpful. And I would talk about her and how great she was and how fabulous she was as a friend of mine and then I would go on to plug her books. And I could also say, if you like my book, you will like her book because valuable content, right? Based off of a thank you card. Or I could say, I got a card this week. It was blank inside because I had to write the inside of it. There wasn't anything on it. I could write whatever I wanted. And I chose to write a quote. And I wrote a quote, and then I wrote my nice little letter to my person. And this is what the quote said. And this is why it's important to me. And this is how it relates to you. And it could be a life lesson. It could be something about your book. It could be something about your author journey. You just have to connect it. 
So let's pretend I have a mask. I was photographing a book earlier this week and I had this really pretty mask and I had it sitting on my desk and so here it is. So I, I took a picture of this mask and I would say, this is interesting. This is interesting to me because it's a mask. Now, I've always liked masks because it kind of gives a different face. It gives a different face to us that isn't ours. It kind of disguises who we are, but it still kind of has some of us in it. And this reminded me of being an author because as an author, I'm kind of putting on a mask as I am writing. And I'm kind of becoming those characters that I'm writing. Now, I am not those characters. Those characters are not me. Those characters have parts of me, and I have parts of my character. But I have to slip on that mask, and that is how I'm writing, because I'm taking on a part of these characters, and then I'm putting that onto paper. And so I, I love the idea of masks connecting to authors, because it's putting on that unique character and changing ourselves just a little bit to write the part that comes up in our story. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how masks work within my own stories. Now I know that there aren't any masks within the story that you have read that I have written, but this character that I wrote about kind of has to play more than one part. She doesn't always necessarily get to be just her. And she kind of takes that mask off that she shows the world and she reveals it to main character guy and he sees the real her. So I just connected that in two different ways. I talked about how authors put on masks to write so that they are taking on parts of their characters and really embodying them and then putting that on paper. And then I talked about how my character kind of wears that public mask in, so that people see what she wants them to see but then she removed it and showed it to the hot guy and, and whatever. I just related that in two different ways. I connected my book, I connected my author journey to a mask. That's, yes, it's pretty, but is it like super awesome for my fans to see? Not unless I make it. And then I've got something like, oh, that's a good one. Okay, so a pen. You would think that a pen is going to be something that is uh, pretty common because I could say, hey, I'm a writer. I'm a writer and I've got a pen and this is my cool pen that I wrote notes for my book on. But I can make it better or more unique. And funny you should mention pen because I actually have one sitting here and I wanted to tell you this really cool story. So here we go. This is my really cool, unique pen. Not what you were expecting, was it? And here's the story I want to tell you. This week, I took an unexpected trip, and I went down to Virginia. And in Virginia, we ended up going shopping, and I got to go to anthropology for the very first time. We do not have one near me. I have been dying to go. I've been following their social media. I've been following how they set up their stores. So I've been studying them as a business for branding purposes. I love what they do. And I've been dying to go into the store. And I walked into the store, and I found some things that I really, really liked. And I walked away with a couple of treasures. Uh, and one of them was this really fabulous pen, which I have every intention of using in my stylized book images for my author clients. But take a look at this. This is pretty amazing, right? I would, I would take a picture of this. I would tell them all about my trip to the store and what I saw and how I felt and the colors. And I would talk about the things that surrounded it. I would talk about finding this magnificent pen. And then I would say, this is an amazing pen. This is an amazing pen, not only because it's beautiful, but because it lets me do what I love to do. It lets me write. Now, most of my work is not done through handwritten things. Most of my work is done on my computer. But this is a symbol of what I love to do. And every time I see this, every time I see this quill pen, I'm going to think about the notes that I am taking for my book. And I'm going to think about how I do that. And yeah, I take, <laughs> and yeah, I take notes on my phone. And I take notes on my computer. But this, this 
is the most epic way to take notes. And I would actually write out notes with this. I would show little notes. I could get that card out and I could write something with it and take a picture of it and use that on my blog, use that in my newsletter. I could use this as a symbol. And I can talk about how this feather reminds me of my story. And I could talk about how it reminds me of my cover. So it's the same color as something on my book cover. And it reminds me of the time that that character sat down and actually wrote out that note to the person she was trying not to fall for, who happened to be an enemy of hers, who was kind of turning into something more. And she had to, she had to teach him something, but in a way that totally released him from everything that he had done and was going to do. And it changed the entire course of the story. And this, this is a symbol of that because that particular thing that she wrote changed the entire story. And I could talk about how this pen is very much like what she would have used to write that. So I've related to my author journey, I've related to the book. I would pick one or the other. I wouldn't go with all of these things. I'm just giving you different examples. So I could talk about how the color reminds me of the book cover. I could talk about how it reminds me of taking notes for my story. I could talk about how it reminds me of that particular scene. I could talk about how it reminds me of something I would put on a desk with my book because it would look pretty. Or I could talk about my journey into that store for the first time and the sights and the sounds and the things that I would see and smell and experience and talk about how that was a reminder of the things that my main character experienced in the book for the first time and that wonder that she experienced as she was going through it because of a pen. Pretty pen, feather pen, but it's just a pen. I could relate, oh, let me see. Ah, earbuds. So I got these. I got these over the weekend too because I was going to use those in a photo shoot. These are not actual ones that I would listen to. These are kind of um, not the best quality, but they're pink and they show up against my white background. So I look for uh, blues and pinks and purples in the earbuds. And I would put these in a picture and I would say, hey guys, I got these really cute earbuds this week. And I plugged them into my phone and I was listening to a song and it reminded me of my story. And I would talk about how that was part of my book playlist that I would create for my book. And then I would say, anytime you see earbuds, I want you to think about that song and think about my book and how it plays into my story. I might take a key. And, ah, uh, I know. I would say, hey guys, I was at the craft store. I got this really cool key this week. And this key reminds me of the first time that I got my own key. So when I was in college, I was given a key to my dorm. It was my very first key to something that was just mine. I didn't have to share it. Um, it wasn't my family's. It wasn't to my family house. I have that. I have my car keys. I've got things like that. But I had to share that with people. This was the very first key that I got for myself. Now, not this one, obviously, but I would talk about the time I got that first key and what that meant to me and how that independence meant something to me and how it taught me things. And then I would relate that to the first time that my character was independent and she had to learn to take care of herself. Just like when I went to college and I got that key to my dorm room, I had to learn to take care of myself. It was on my own. I wasn't with my family. I wasn't with my friends. I had to do it myself. And that key was a symbol of that. And this key reminds me of that symbol and when my character had to be independent of herself. For my key, a decorative ornamental key. It, it's amazing, right? It's easy to do that. You can hand yourself objects around your house and just figure out how to turn that into something valuable. So go back to those steps. We're talking about identifying what everyday or personal story you're going to be talking about. So talk about your coffee, talk about your cat, talk about your puppy dog, talk about your bubble gum. Then decide what your connection is going to be. How can you take that and relate it to your fans? How do you make it valuable to them? Well, your, your chewing gum relates to your talkative character. And that cliff relates to your author journey. And your... Um, your note card relates to your author friends and how thankful you are for them and everything that they've done for you and that your fans should check out their work too. 
And that pen relates back to that scene in your book where your character wrote that note that changed the course of the story. And your mask relates to how you take on your characters as you are writing your story and how they then have to put that mask on to survive within the story and take it off for the people that they learn to love along the way. So what can you do? Well, I know this is hard. I know it's difficult, especially when you're just starting out. So like every week, I have a freebie for you. So tomorrow in our show notes newsletter, I'm going to be sending out this freebie download for you. If you are watching our rebroadcast, jump down into our show notes where you can get the link to shownotes.readingtransforms.com. And that will take you to our show notes newsletter. Every week I send out a freebie to you to help you along the way and to help you with implementing that lesson into your marketing strategy every single week. And so this week I've got a great one for you. It is everyday ideas for epic blog posts. And it is a series of ideas where I specifically tell you what an object is or what an event is and how you can then translate into something valuable for your fans. So I think I talk about coffee and how you could make that related to your fans. And I talk about, um, going out on a walk in the fall and how you can relate that to your story and make it valuable to your fans. And I think there's like 12 or so ideas uh, within this document that gives you ideas that you can do and you can copy those. You can swipe those from me and do your own version of them. So make it kind of work for you and take your own pictures and things like that. But it gives you flat out what to do what your main idea is as you are writing this blog post. Or you can take my ideas and tweak them to fit you in a different way. So maybe you see coffee differently than I saw coffee. Or maybe your really pretty pen relates to you differently than it relates to me. Each of our stories are going to be different because we're relating it to our own personal journeys. You see, my pen is different than your pen. And how it connects to me and my story connects differently than it connects for you. And how it works with my story is different than your story because our stories are different. And those earbuds, maybe I'm relating mine to a playlist, but maybe you are relating it to a scene from your book and how it affected your character. And maybe if they had just taken those earbuds out, they would have heard something that would have changed the entire course of the story. Or maybe your characters are sassy and they had earbuds in, but they were spying instead. They weren't actually listening to their music. And you want to talk about how that actually happened to you. You could tell a story about how you pretended to be listening to music to avoid being in a conversation, but you got information that was important to you. And you can show those earbuds. You could take anything and change it into something valuable for your fans simply by redirecting it. And this is really great because a lot of you are retellers. You like to take stories and change them and challenge them and present them in a new way. And that is what you're doing here. So think of this like a retelling. You're taking an object, you're taking your coffee, you're taking a stapler, and you are turning it into something different and valuable. How am I presenting this coffee? Well, I talked about my pumpkin spice latte and how it was an obsession for me, and how my character was obsessed with something, too. Now, tr truth of the matter is I don't drink coffee. I don't like pumpkin spice anything. And so maybe my story is going to be a little bit different. Maybe I would talk about my pretty coffee cup and how it relates to something else. Each of us can do things that relate to us and our author brands in a way that is unique and specific to us, but is also valuable to your fans. You need to know what is valuable to them. Maybe your story about going to the store and getting a piece of gum is going to be different than mine as I talk about a character who just will not stop talking. Maybe yours is related in an entirely different way, and that is a good thing, because we can take the same content, we can be given the same object, and do it in a different way. Just like I did with my theater arts class. We were all given the same script, we all had the same lines, but my group decided to do it differently, in a unique way that was more exciting, more valuable, and more specific to us. We did it differently. We didn't have to do the same thing that everybody else does. So how can you make things different for you? How is your coffee different for you? And how is it different for your fans? This week, I want to challenge you to make an amazing value-packed blog post 
based on something that you are doing this week or something that you see this week, something that is every day in common. Take a look at that download I am giving out tomorrow in our show notes newsletter. Pick one of those things if you need to, or pick your own, and then write your blog post or your newsletter, and then send it to me. I want to see what you're working on. And if you're having trouble with this, jump into community.readingtransforms.com. That is going to kick you over to our closed Facebook group, where I am in there every single day, giving content ideas, helping with with your social media marketing strategies, and I am teaching you how to work with the algorithms for the social media changes that are going on every single day. And I will be there to help you with your ideas. So if you've got an idea and you want to bounce things off of me, do it. If you're confused on how to do this, ask me questions. If you are not certain what you want to do, ask for some advice. If you have a challenge for me, good grief, take a picture of your thing, send it to me, and I will tell you a really cool way you can turn this into an article for yourself. It's all up to you. So we are at the point where we are going to be answering some questions. Go ahead and jump over into the chat box and leave me some questions. Now, if you're watching our rebroadcast, you can jump down into our comments and leave me some comments, and I will be happy to get back to you on those. Um, We have a really great article that we are going to be posting on our blog tomorrow. You can check out, too. It's got some great ideas I did not mention today, so you definitely want to be checking that out as well. So go ahead, take a minute, jump into our chat box if you are here. Use that red question mark. And let me know what you are thinking. Okay, so our moderators have sent us some questions. Let's take a look and see what you guys are thinking. I get that you were doing everyday items, but should we only be doing everyday items that we see on these blog posts, or should we be doing other things as well? Well, I'm going to tell you, you can do anything. That, that's what this whole thing is about, doing anything. So maybe it's an adventure. Maybe you're going backpacking and you want to talk about the mountains that you're going to see. Or maybe you want to talk about your hike up those mountains. Maybe you want to talk about your coffee. Maybe you want to talk about your pen. Maybe you want to talk about your computer troubles. Maybe you want to talk about um, that thing that came up this week that you weren't expecting to happen. So I randomly took that vacation. And then I turned that into a valuable lesson. I didn't know it was coming. But I could have used that as an example for one of my other episodes of RTTV. So if you've been hanging out with me, you know I did an episode on creating emergency content. Um, So I was not expecting to go on my trip this week, but because I was ready and aware that things could come up and I had some emergency backup stuff planned, I was able to grab the stuff that I needed, get it on my phone or get it set up to post for me, which I didn't actually do, but I could have done. Um, but I had everything that I needed. I just grabbed it, threw it on my phone, and I could do it on the road. I did it as I went, or I did it from my hotel room, or I did a broadcast about my puppy dog from my hotel room. And I did not know that today's person was going to cancel at the last minute. When they, I didn't know that they were going to have an emergency come up, and they wouldn't be able to be on the show. And so I had to go through, um, yesterday, I had just enough time to go through everything and decide what's going to be valuable to show today. Because I had a list of ideas, I could go through them and I could pick what I needed more time to prepare for, what I really wanted to spend a lot of time working on, and what was something that I could teach easily with only one day's notice. And so because I had that ready to go, I could turn that into an extra blog post. How that emergency content was valuable to me because it actually ended up happening and I needed to use it. Uh, You can take anything that you're doing and turn it into a story for your fans. So whether it's your book sticker or your computer completely failing or your puppy getting washed away in a wave in the ocean or your cup of coffee or something that you see every day or some new experience that you are doing for the very first time, you can turn into valuable content for your fans. You just have to figure out how. You do definitely definitely do not have to stick to just everyday objects. Yes, you can use those to inspire you. And yes, you can look around your desk and pull your pen out, pull your keyboard out, pull your car keys out. Don't photograph your car keys. Um, But you can use this as inspiration for the things that you are writing your fans. How do you feel about using seasonal items in these blog posts? Um, Yes, let's just talk about that. I think that that is a great idea. Right now, it's fall, and I am sitting in front of a big picture window, and I've got leaves strung up 
that I can see in my peripheral vision as I'm talking to you, that I'm seeing those beautiful orange leaves. And then I look outside, and I am in front of my front yard right now, so I am seeing trees, I am seeing orange, I am seeing red, I am seeing yellow, I am seeing vines, I am seeing all sorts of gorgeous fall things. And that is not something I would experience year-round. But I could take a picture of my decorations up above the window, or I could take a picture of my view out the window, or I could take a close-up of a leaf and then equate it to something within my journey. Maybe, oh, here's a fun one. Okay, so I've got my leaf. I'm taking a picture of a leaf, and I want to talk about a leaf's journey and how it starts out as this tiny little bud on the tree, and then it grows into a leaf, and it's lush, and it's green, and it's beautiful, and it's it's changing its food uh, from the sunlight and it's doing all these fabulous things and then at the end it turns into something absolutely gorgeous because I'm going to relate this to my author journey. I start out new and I learn what I'm doing and I write my first book and that is my bud and then it blossoms into this leaf and I go through the process of doing my editing and my refining and the way that I'm changing things and I'm working with my beta readers, my critique partners and my editors and beautiful, wonderful things are happening on my publishing journey and then fall comes and my gorgeous story turns into a bright, vibrant red leaf just like the one in this picture. And then right before my final moment with this book before it goes out into the world, before it drops off that tree, and it falls gracefully into the book world, and it's public for everyone, it turns into that beautiful, vibrant, final pop of color, that red, gorgeous, glamorous color of thy leaf. That is my final manuscript. Everything is done. It is the most beautiful I've ever seen it. I am totally okay with it, totally prepared for it, and I cannot wait to just drop it off the tree and let it float into the world of publishing. And I've gone from that new author with my bud and my fabulous, amazing manuscript that has been grown and been cultivated and tweaked and made ready for the world, and it bursts out in beautiful, vibrant color and then falls into the book world. I just took a leap and talked about my author journey. Pretty cool, right? So you can take seasonal things like leaves or, or like pumpkins, or you could talk about Christmas ornaments and how it reminds you of your story and how the one character is hanging ornaments or decorating the tree. You could talk about spring flowers. You could talk about different decorations for things. You could talk about Valentine's Day and love and how it relates to your loving characters and how you love them and they love you and they love each other and whatever. You can take seasonal items and definitely make those into really cool blog posts. I cannot come up with ideas. What do I do? I know. It's hard. It is super hard. It is very hard to do this. I get that. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to sit down and make a list of things. Make a list of ten things. I want five or six of them to be things that you would find in your everyday life. So your coffee, your pen, um, your car. You could talk about your outfit. You could talk about your hat. You could talk about your jewelry. You could talk about uh, walking your puppy dog. And then I want you to do the last couple that are experiences that maybe are a little more unique to what you're doing that particular week. So you could talk about your vacation, or you could talk about um, how your dog went under the waves, because that's my go-to today. <laughs> you could talk about things that are a little less common. And I want you to sit there and make a list of connections. So how does this connect to something else? How can I make this connect to my fans? And you do not have to write articles on these. This is just for practice. So write down paperclip. How does that work for your fans? Well, I saw this paperclip on my desk, and it relates to my fans because, and then list a couple of different ways. They don't have to be good. <laughs> you don't have to use these. You just have to practice. So that paperclip could relate to your fans because it holds your characters together, yes. And we talk about how your paperclip holds things like book pages together. Something, some kind of event or some kind of shared connection connects your characters together. And so you equate the paperclip to the thing connecting your characters together. What holds them together? Make a list uh, and put your earrings on it. Shining gold earrings. It reminds you of 
the design on the cover of your book and this is why and you talk about that put down something like um like a towel there's a towel over here <laughs> put down something like a towel and talk to me about why that relates to your fans maybe maybe it's for cleaning up spills and maybe you want to tell them about the time that you almost spilled your drink on your computer and ruined your story and you had to clean it up with the towel beforehand and you want to tell them that story or maybe you want to talk about the tissues and how tissues are used to wipe your eyes when you cry just like the time you cried in the book when something horrible happened or maybe you want to talk about the time that you got rejected by someone um, whether it was a publisher or or something else and you want to talk about how the tissue reminds you of rejection and how you got through that rejection and how they can get through it too. So make a list of 10 things and then connect it and then don't do anything with it. If you find something really awesome, of course, write a blog article about it, but you don't have to. This is just for practice and every day for the next week, write down 10 things. That was fine. Write down 10 things and write connections. They do not have to be good. They do not have to be awesome and you do not have to use them. It's just for practice. Because the more you can take an everyday object and have someone hand something to you and turn it into a story or turn it into a lesson, the better you're going to get at. I'm at the point where my students could hand me anything. They could, they could hand me my hair tie here. Yes, that is sitting right next to me. They could hand me a hair tie and I could turn it into a valuable lesson about how it holds my hair back when I am working hard on something and I can't have my hair falling in my face and ruining something like my pictures. Oftentimes when I am photographing things, I have to tie my hair back or at least throw it over my shoulders so that when I'm leaning over, my hair does not blow in front of my camera lens in the wind and how that would ruin my photos or maybe add to them. Sometimes it adds to them. And I would talk about why it's so important to have one of these and why it's so important to have something like this for life. When things are getting a little bit crazy, you need to kind of have something that holds you together and holds back the things that other people don't need to see. And you could turn that into a whole lesson about life or about your story or about your characters. It's all up to you. Just do 10 things per day for the next week and just get used to it. Once you start becoming more comfortable with it, you're going to be able to do this so much easier. So now, like I said, I'm not leaving you high and dry. We have that downloadable bonus freebie for you, which is coming out in your show note newsletter tomorrow. So show notes.readingtransforms.com to get signed up for that. You can also jump into community.readingtransforms.com to ask me questions, to get more insight into this, and to get more details on what I'm talking about, and to get help on everything, because I know this one's a little bit hard to do until you get used to it. But I promise, if I can do it, you can do it. I can turn anything into an interesting lesson. You can do it too. You just gotta work on it. You just gotta put a little effort into it and you just have to practice and you will get better and better. But treat it like a story. Add in lots of details, lots of colorful things. You wanna be very descriptive about what you're talking about and then relate it to your point and then drive it home by saying, every time you see that chewing gum, you're going to remember this character. Every time you listen to music on your earbuds, you're gonna think about my playlist for my book. Every time you see a mask in a store, on a wall, you're going to think about how my character had to take that mask off to connect with the guy. You just have to figure out what's going to connect with your fans. So you can turn anything, your coffee, your drive to work, your shopping trip, your vacation, your puppy dog, your kitty cat, your pen, your invitation, your book stickers, into something valuable for your fans. I am so glad that you guys have joined me. This has been such a great episode. I love hanging out with you. I see that you guys are coming up with some really great suggestions in the comment box. This is awesome. I love that you are taking this and you're putting this into practice already. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, I love that. I'm not going to say that out loud because I don't want anybody to go taking that on you before you get a chance to write it, but that's a good one. I like that. Drop, drop your ideas in the comment box. Balance ideas off of each other and then come to the community and talk to each other about it because it's going to help you and I am here to help you and we're all here to help each other because we're fantastic like that. And I cannot wait to see what you do. Make sure you're tagging me in things because I really want to see it. 
I'm K.M. Robinson of K.M. Robinson Photography and Reading Transforms. Thank you so much for joining me. This is so great. Next week is going to be awesome. I'm really, really excited about what we are doing. Um, and I will be dropping all of this information in our show notes newsletter for you tomorrow. Now, before you go, I have just a couple of things I want to remind you of. Um, we've got some new things coming up. I'm really excited because we are doing new things with our other broadcast. So Young Adult Edition is my second broadcast. It actually happens before this broadcast, and I am bringing on authors live every single week for a half hour live broadcast with their fans. We hang out, we play games, we throw confetti, we do fabulous things. And every single week, your fans get to connect with you and new fans get to connect with you, which is awesome. Now, if you're an author who wants to be involved in that, message me. I want to hear from you, and I want to get you on the show. And if you have author friends you feel like would benefit from this or would want to be involved with the show, tag them. Show me them. Jump onto our Facebook page, Reading Transforms, um, on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash reading transforms, and tell me and tag people who want to be involved or you think should be involved so that I know who would be a good fit. You can also jump onto our Young Adult Edition Facebook page. That is facebook.com slash young adult edition so that I get your ideas there as well. So guys, I will see you next week. I've got just a couple things I want to leave you with. Thanks so much for joining me. Stay inspired. All of my friends are authors these days, and I thought, why should I be the only one that gets to hang out with these fabulous people? So now I want to invite you to join us every single week on Sundays at 3 p.m. for a live party on the internet. That means you can join us from anywhere. You bring the confetti and questions and we'll bring the surprises, the secrets, the giveaways, and so much more every single week on Young Adult Edition. During each episode of Young Adult Edition, we'll be answering live questions from you. We'll be throwing confetti, we'll be playing games, we'll be giving away secrets, and we'll let you test their book every single week. You're officially invited to the party. Will we see you there? I love to hear from you, so let me know what you want to see during the next Young Adult Edition, and make sure you let me know what authors you want to see next. I'm Cam Robinson of Cam Robinson Photography and Reading Transforms, and I will see you at the party. <laughs>
Get the community and support that you've been longing for and surround yourself with authors just like you. We'll see you there.